Good afternoon, Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Uh, going to try to make another video today. Um, I got a question on on the channel um, about a subject that I had addressed in passing in another video, and uh, I think the question was asked in in the right heart and the right manner, and it's a good question, and so I want to answer it and cover it today. And I want to talk about big horses versus little horses. Uh, and it may be more relevant than you uh, first think. Um, by the way, before we get started, I had another fella uh, comment about, just mentioned to me that the volume has been pretty low, and it has been, and I apologize for that. I finally went today and got me an adapter so I could plug the microphone into my phone. Hopefully that helps the volume and, and things are a little better. But big horses versus small horses. And what this person asked was, how come you as a big man with heavy saddles ride little horses? Um, now, I just, I want to clarify me as a big man. I'm six foot tall and 180 pounds. I'm, I'm not a giant of a fella. Um, and, but my, but my saddle, I do have working saddles. And that's what the video they were watching was talking about was a good working saddle is a heavy saddle. So, I at six foot tall and 180 pounds, and my saddle when it's fully rigged, got saddlebags and slicker, it's a, it's a good 50 pounds. How come I ride? I prefer to ride little horses. Well, let me let me start. Let me back up and let's talk about the physiology about the thing for a minute, okay? So let's compare big horses to big men and little horses to little men okay now you take big men i mean really big men so in today's popular culture when you think of a big man you think of the rock johnson or you might think of shaquille o'neal and some of those basketball players some of the football players really big men so the idea is uh if a fella's a good size fella and he has a good size saddle then he should have a big horse um, but you these big men when these big men okay they're in sports now wrestling football basketball uh, it's a controlled environment I am not at all taken away from their athleticism they're incredible athletes but their athleticism is in a very narrow category. Um, when these guys retire, what do they do? Do they take up mountain biking? Do they take up rock climbing? Do they start running triathlons? Marathons? No, they don't. Um, they bulk up really big in a controlled environment in the gym and start doing movies. Uh, or they take up golf. Think about it. Michael Jordan, what's he known for today? Golf. Um, these guys do not take up these high output athletic activities. Why? Because they're not built for it. The Olympics is coming up this year. Um, if you watch long distance running, if you watch marathons, uh, if you watch the high jump, pole vaulting, sprinting, if you are ever out on the trails and you watch hikers, you watch mountain bikers, you watch those kind of athletic people, they're not big people. They're not big people. Um, and horses are the same way. Okay, You take a horse that's 16 hands and 1,200 pounds, he has to carry that. Without a saddle, without a person, he has to carry his weight and his size. And then you add a person to it, you add a saddle to it, and then you head up into some really super steep, up and down, very rocky, sagebrush that's knee high or hip high on me. Uh, and then you go into the timber, thick trees, uh, stands of aspen, you go into all that, narrow trails, uh, they don't do well. 
because they're not built for that. They're not built for that. They have to eat more to maintain their own body size. They have to, uh, they recover slower. Big men, big horses have a slower metabolism than smaller men, smaller horses. It takes them longer to recover from extreme exertion. Um, and so I have found that small, tough horses do better in rough country and in rough work than big horses. You take the same size man, the same size saddle, in the exact same terrain. Now there's exceptions to every rule. If somebody gets on there and says, hey, my horse, old, old blue, now, now just wait a minute. I'm not talking your horse down, okay? We're just speaking general rules here. You take a, a horse that's 14 2 and 800 pounds. Now for me, that's ideal. That's the perfect size horse for me, okay? So you take that horse and you stand him right here. And you take, now he's, he's in shape, okay? We didn't just pull him out of a flatland pasture somewhere, he's in shape. And then you take a 16 hand, 1200 pound horse, right here. And you put a 50 pound saddle on this horse and a 50 pound saddle on this horse. And you put a 180 pound man on this horse and a 180 pound man on this horse. And you go side by side up the same trail into really steep country, really high country, with a lot of rocks, a lot of narrow trails, um, a lot of timber, a lot of deadfalls, a lot of logs to go over, a lot of ravines to go down and up. And at the end of a day, after eight hours of riding, as a rule, the little horse will be in a lot better shape than the big horse, okay? The big horse generally will be, he'll be more wore out. He'll have a harder time, not only that, but the foundation of a horse is their hoofs, okay? So you take a really big horse needs a really big hoof to support him. A little horse needs a little hoof. Well, which one is going to be more nimble in rough country? Which one is going to be more um, able to pick its way through really thick stuff, really rocky, jumbled up ground, deadfalls where trees are crisscrossed each other, uh, pick their way down really steep slopes or up really steep slopes, it's going to be the smaller hooves. Just like the smaller men are rock climbing and are in the back country in the extreme, the smaller horses do better. And so it's, it's more, um, it's, it's more conscientious of the horse for one thing. Uh, it's, it's not rare. It's not right in, in my view to take a horse that is not um, anatomically designed for a certain genre and put him in it. Any more than it's right to take a little horse and put him out in a plowed field and put a big old plow behind him. He's not built for that. He's not designed for that. Now, some anecdotal reference here. We went out the other day and, and I've mentioned it before, in some really super steep, really rough, really rugged country. There were 13 of us out there gathering cattle in the mountains. There was not one big horse in the bunch. And these are guys that do this for a living. There, I don't think, there was one mare, there was one mare that was over 15 hands. There were two or three that were at 15 hands and then predominantly most of the horses were at like 14-2 and they were slimmer, more rawhide built horses. Um, Cause the guys know, they do this for a living, they know that these type horses, they do better. Uh, if, you're, if you are going up a really steep grade, okay, and it's covered in sagebrush and it's rocky, and you've got a five-week-old calf scampering up, uh, trying to trying to get away. And you've got to tear up that slope after that calf. You've got to go uphill through the sage and through the rocks at speed, without falling and without slipping, to get up and around that calf to push that calf back down. You do not want a great big horse. 
You do not want some thoroughbred that's 16 hands and and fine boned. You don't want some. You don't want something that's 16 hands and half percheron with size four shoe. Uh, you want an athlete that can scamper up and pick its way through that without falling, get above the calf at speed and push the calf back down. And if you're packing or wrangling, it's the same thing. You go through, if you've never tried to ride through Aspen Deadfall before, um, it is it is its own challenge. And you have a giant horse and you've got an Aspen tree about that big around that has fallen across another Aspen tree. So the top of that tree is 18 inches above the ground and the trail is only about so wide and you and they have to go over it now it seems counterintuitive maybe if you're a little bit green but the little horse can nimble his way over that log much easier than a big horse because a big horse has to get all of his size and all of his body weight as massive as it is over that log plus his rider in the saddle um, the taller the horse, the taller you are up in the trees. You can't pick your way through the heavy stuff. Uh, big horses are long-legged, so it's really hard for them to slow down and be nimble and pick their way through the rough stuff, be it sagebrush or a pine thicket or an aspen growth. Um, and so, so yes, I, I ride smaller horses uh, at my size. It's easier on me. Uh, because the horse isn't as likely to fall and we can go through the rough stuff and get the job done, but it's easier on the horse. Um, it's like taking one of these great big football players. Now, some of these football players, they do phenomenal speed at, you know, at the 100-yard dash. Phenomenal. But they're not going to run a 26-mile marathon. And it would, it would not be fair to take Charles Barkley even at his prime and put him on a 26 mile marathon. He's not built for it, okay? And so it's not fair to take these great big giant horses that are, that are designed and built for a certain deal to take them and put them in our world because they don't fit in our world. They do not do well. Uh, we have to have horses, we have to have horses that can do the job that we're out there to do. Um, and so it's better for us, the little horses, but it's also easier on the horse. So I hope that answers some questions. I, I hope it makes sense. Um, you, a lot of your really big horses have, I mean, your really tall horses that are so popular out there, uh, they have a lot of thoroughbred blood in them. So there's another, another side of this. Your little horses tend to be more um, cold-blooded bred. Um, Hot-blooded, your Arabs, okay, your, your thoroughbreds, your warm blood, your hunter jumpers, your, your, you know, these horses, they're hot bred and they're long and they're tall and they're lean and they're made for flat country at high rates of speed. But they also tend to be more hyped up. They tend to be more uh, nervous. They tend to have finer bones. Um, and where a smaller horse, not always, there's exceptions to every rule again, but a smaller horse, they tend to be calmer and they tend to be able to look and to focus on what they're doing and pick their way through. So it's not a form of abuse. Um, it's, it's finding the tool that fits the job. Okay. So I hope this makes a little bit of sense. I, I hope this explains it. So when, like I said in the previous video I did several months ago about buying a horse, that's where I had first broached this subject. If you're going to buy a horse, you need to know what you're going to do with that horse. And if you're going to be riding in rough country, um, I would strongly consider that you look at smaller horses. Now I don't mean ponies, okay? But like I said, 14-2, for me, about 14-2, and 800 pounds is about the perfect size. And for those that don't know, 14-2, a horse is measured 
from their withers, which if you look at the neck coming down, here's the neck coming down, there should be, if the horse is built right, a little peak, a little ridge right there that goes down into the back. Top of that peak is the withers. If you measure from that withers to the ground, a horse is measured in hands. A hand is four inches, okay? So if you measure from the ground up to the top of those withers, all right, however many inches that is, so a hand is four inches, so it'll be 14 hands and two extra inches. 15 hands is you measure 15 uh, times four, and that's how many inches they are. So that's just over a lot of years of experience. That's what I have found. The, the best horse I ever had in the mountains, the best horse I ever had, uh, her name was Scotch, and she was a little Bay Roan mare, and she was 14 to and about 800 pounds. And I've mentioned her in other videos before. I rode her in the mountains of Alaska, and I rode the hound out of that mare. But I fed her really good. I took really good care of her, and she just became just a slab of muscle. Never soared, never tired, never quit, never gave up. She carried me through some of the roughest country you could imagine. But we had on that outfit, we had some big horses and they didn't fare near so well. Okay, so um, I hope this helps you. Now, if you like the content, click on like. And um, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe for me. And, and then just keep riding, okay? Be safe, be logical, be reasonable, and have fun. And I'm gonna add this, to be logical and to be reasonable, in this day and age, what that means is do not get your information and your philosophies and your ideas of the reality of horses from Hollywood, okay? Hollywood goes with what looks good, not what works good, all right? So we don't want to do Hollywood, all right? So have fun, and we'll catch you next time.